Philosophy's Quest. Welcome to a transformative journey of self-discovery and personal growth. In a world inundated with distractions and chaos, the wisdom of the ancient Stoic philosophers is like a guiding light, illuminating the path to inner peace and resilience. As the great Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Drawing inspiration from the Stoic sages, we are reminded that our thoughts shape our reality and well-being, much like the influence of the company we keep can profoundly impact our journey. Today, we embark on a quest to uncover and eliminate seven insidious anti-Stoic habits that might be lurking in our daily lives. These habits, if left unchecked, can obstruct our path to serenity, wisdom, and a more fulfilling existence. But fear not, for we'll not only uncover these habits, but also explore actionable ways to reclaim our stoic direction and inner peace. Before we delve into this life-altering journey, I implore you to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Your support allows us to continue spreading the timeless wisdom of stoicism to more seekers of inner peace and wisdom. And if you haven't already, be sure to activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our enlightening content. One complaining about things beyond your control. Picture this, you're at a picturesque picnic, the sun beaming down and the spread of delicious food beckoning. Suddenly, out of nowhere, rain clouds gather and a drizzle starts to fall. While most people would adapt to the situation, perhaps seeking refuge or even enjoying the refreshing change in weather, there are those who would let this unforeseen turn of events cast a dark cloud over their day. They'd complain about the weather, their stroke of bad luck, or the fact that their outfits are now ruined. This scenario perfectly exemplifies the detrimental habit of being affected by circumstances beyond our control. Stoicism, a philosophy that has withstood the test of time, emphasizes the crucial distinction between what we can change and what lies beyond our influence. In this context, it calls us to consider the weather, a classic example of something entirely out of our control. While we can't command the skies to conform to our desires, we have dominion over our reactions to such circumstances. Complaining about elements that fall outside the realm of our control is a fruitless endeavor that consumes our precious energy and time. It is a self-imposed imprisonment in a cycle of perpetual discontent. In the workplace, this behavior is all too common. We've all encountered colleagues who spend an inordinate amount of time lamenting decisions made by higher-ups or bemoaning changes in company policies. Their constant grumbling not only hampers their own productivity and inner peace, but also creates a negative environment for those who must work alongside them. To break free from this anti-Stoic behavior, we can draw upon the wisdom of Epictetus, who urged us to continually ask ourselves, is this something that is, or is not, in my control? When faced with situations that are beyond our sphere of influence, instead of vocalizing our discontent, we can choose a more Stoic response. We can ask ourselves, how can I adapt to this situation? Or what can I learn from this experience? By doing so, we regain our power over our emotional responses and maintain our inner peace ensuring that we remain unshaken by external events, regardless of how unpredictable they might be. In a world where uncertainty and unpredictability are constants, the Stoic philosophy offers a sanctuary of serenity. It beckons us to focus our energy on the things we can change while gracefully accepting those that we cannot. This fundamental shift in perspective liberates us from the chains of discontent and allows us to approach life's challenges with resilience and equanimity. It reminds us that even in the face of a sudden downpour during a picnic, we have the power to choose whether we let it ruin our day or savor the unique beauty it brings. 2. Seeking external validation In a world where our lives are increasingly intertwined with the digital realm, the habit of seeking external validation has become a pervasive challenge 
one that can erode the very core of our self-worth and peace of mind. Picture a scenario where you've invested your heart and soul into a project, whether it's a creative endeavor or a professional accomplishment. You've meticulously chosen a new outfit that makes you feel confident and proud. But instead of basking in the satisfaction of your achievements or reveling in your newfound confidence, you find yourself anxiously checking your social media accounts for validation likes, comments, or any form of external praise. In our digital age, this insatiable need for affirmation has been amplified exponentially. Social media platforms, designed to engage our most basic human desire for approval, often ensnare us in a web of seeking external validation. The likes and follows we accumulate become markers of our self-worth, our popularity, and our social standing. However, these numbers are not only fleeting, but are also influenced by a multitude of external factors, many of which are entirely beyond our control. This roller coaster of highs and lows, as we receive praise one day and criticism the next, creates a turbulent emotional state, preventing us from cultivating a consistent sense of self-worth and inner peace. In stark contrast, Stoicism teaches us to find validation from within to anchor our self-worth not in the transient opinions of others, but in the steady bedrock of our virtues, actions, and personal growth. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus wisely noted, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This means that the true measure of our worth isn't determined by the praise or criticism we receive from others, but by how we evaluate and feel about our own actions and decisions. The Stoic path urges us to look inward, to reflect on our actions, intentions, and integrity. It encourages us to ask ourselves, am I proud of my actions or decisions? If the answer is affirmative, then that alone should be sufficient to affirm our self-worth. It underscores the idea that the foundation of our self-esteem should not rest on the shaky ground of external validation, but should be deeply rooted in our intrinsic values and the moral compass that guides our actions. 3. Being a slave to your emotions Imagine a family gathering where a relative's remark stings, triggering a whirlwind of emotions, anger, defensiveness, or sadness. Before you realize it, you might snap back with a hurtful comment, creating tension for everyone present. This is an example of being overtaken by emotions. Emotions, in their essence, are neither good nor bad. They provide valuable insights into our state of mind and how we perceive our surroundings. However, becoming a slave to these emotions, allowing them to dictate our actions unchecked, can lead to regrettable decisions and strained relationships. The Stoic philosophy emphasizes recognizing our emotions without being consumed by them. As Marcus Aurelius eloquently put it, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. While you may not control the initial emotional reaction, you certainly have control over your subsequent actions. So, the next time you're confronted with a surge of emotion, whether due to a friend's comment, a work situation, or any other trigger, take a moment to breathe. Ask yourself, is my immediate reaction to this emotion the best course of action? Will it lead to harmony or further discord? By practicing this pause and introspection, you cultivate emotional resilience, ensuring your reactions align with your values and not just fleeting feelings. This stoic approach enables you to navigate life's challenges with reason, thought, and wisdom. For pursuit of excess pleasure. Imagine walking into a grand feast with an array of sumptuous dishes, decadent desserts, and an endless flow of drinks. While it's tempting to indulge without restraint, by the evening's end, the initial euphoria might be replaced with discomfort or regret. Such is the trap of excessive pleasure. Life offers a multitude of pleasures, from delicious foods to luxurious experiences. While enjoying them is part of the human experience, becoming entrapped in the cycle of constantly seeking more can lead to a sense of emptiness. The transient joy these pleasures provide 
can often divert us from seeking deeper, more meaningful sources of contentment. Seneca's profound observation, slavery resides under marble and gold, serves as a reminder that being excessively attached to materialistic pleasures can ironically restrict our freedom. We become chained to a treadmill, forever chasing the next source of fleeting happiness. Take the allure of technology, for instance. The thrill of purchasing the latest smartphone is undeniable, but how often does that thrill wane, only to be reignited by the announcement of a newer model? Similarly, consider the culture of binge-watching shows. It's enjoyable in the moment, but does it truly offer long-lasting satisfaction? To navigate this, it's beneficial to cultivate an attitude of moderation. Before diving headlong into the next indulgence, pause and reflect, is this pursuit adding value to my life, or am I merely seeking a temporary high? Such introspection helps distinguish between what genuinely enriches our lives and what merely offers a momentary escape. By ensuring our desires align with long-term well-being rather than transient highs, we position ourselves to experience a deeper, more sustained sense of joy and fulfillment. 5. Living in the Past Imagine sitting on your porch on a beautiful evening, but instead of enjoying the sunset, your mind is miles away, tangled in a web of past events mistakes made, opportunities missed, or memories of people you once knew. While everyone occasionally reminisces, getting anchored in the past can prevent you from fully living in the present. Dwelling on past events, especially those filled with regret or sorrow, is like walking through life with a heavy backpack. It burdens you, slows you down, and prevents you from seeing the opportunities and beauty right in front of you. Every time you replay a past event, you give it power, allowing it to occupy valuable mental real estate that could be better used for the present. Epictetus, one of the renowned Stoic philosophers, said, Men are disturbed not by things but by the views which they take of them. This means our suffering often isn't because of past events themselves, but because of our continued focus and interpretation of them. Consider the story of two old friends reuniting after many years. One laments over the past, over chances not taken and relationships lost. The other, however, speaks of lessons learned, gratitude for present moments, and excitement for the future. Both have experienced the passage of time, but their perspectives differ vastly. To break free from the chains of the past, cultivate mindfulness. When you find yourself drifting into bygone times, gently pull your attention back to the present. Engage in activities that ground you in the now, like meditation, journaling, or simply taking a walk and observing your surroundings. By focusing on the present, and treating each day as a new chapter, you free yourself from the shackles of the past, allowing you to write a brighter, more fulfilling story for yourself. 6. Obsessing over the future Imagine being on a serene beach vacation, but instead of being in the moment, you're lost in thought, worrying about an upcoming work project, a financial decision, or any number of future uncertainties. While it's natural to think about and plan for the future, being consumed by it can rob you of the joy and experiences of the present. Consistently projecting into the future can be likened to standing at the base of a vast mountain, constantly looking at the peak without appreciating the journey. It's easy to get caught up in what-ifs and hypothetical scenarios. This perpetual state of future focus can lead to anxiety, restlessness, and even a feeling of being unanchored. Marcus Aurelius the Stoic Emperor wrote, Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. This insight suggests that no amount of worry can change the future, but our reactions and preparations in the present moment can. Consider two students before a major exam. One is constantly anxious, imagining all potential negative outcomes, while the other focuses on the present, studying and preparing to the best of their ability. Both are aware of the upcoming challenge, but their approach and mental state differ significantly. 
To avoid getting trapped in endless future-focused loops, it's essential to ground yourself in the present. Whenever you catch yourself drifting into the realm of future anxieties, practice mindfulness exercises such as deep breathing or sensory focus to bring yourself back to the here and now. Remember, while it's prudent to prepare for the future, it's equally vital to live and cherish the present, for it's the only moment truly within our grasp. By maintaining a balanced perspective, acknowledging the future but embracing the present, you set the stage for a more harmonious and fulfilling life journey. 7. Seeking Perfection in Everything Imagine hosting a dinner party at your home. The guests are enjoying themselves, the ambiance is lively, and the food is delightful. Instead of reveling in the moment, you're fixated on the slight oversalting of one dish or the minor imperfection in the table setting. This incessant pursuit of perfection in every little detail can become an overwhelming shadow, casting a pall over even the most joyous occasions. In today's age, with the surge of social media and the constant barrage of picture-perfect lives, there's an amplified pressure to attain perfection in all facets of life, flawless appearance, ideal relationships, dream jobs, or impeccable homes. The quest for perfection can become a relentless treadmill, always running but never reaching the desired destination. Seneca once remarked, to wish for perfection is a sure way to become unhappy. This stoic insight underscores the realization that perfection is an elusive and often unattainable goal. Striving for it can lead to a sense of perpetual inadequacy, frustration, and even burnout. Think of a renowned artist working on a masterpiece. If they were paralyzed by the pursuit of absolute perfection, they might never complete a single artwork. Instead, they recognize that beauty often lies in imperfections, and it's the overall creation that matters, not the minute irregularities. To navigate away from this perfectionist trap, it's important to embrace the concept of good enough. This doesn't mean settling for mediocrity, but recognizing that striving for excellence and seeking absolute perfection are two different things. Celebrate your achievements, no matter how small, and learn to accept the imperfections that come with being human. When you find yourself spiraling into perfectionist tendencies, take a step back and ask yourself, is this truly important? Will this matter in a week, a month, or a year? By reframing your perspective and focusing on the bigger picture, you can free yourself from the constraints of perfectionism and lead a more balanced and contented life. As we reflect upon the wisdom of the Stoic sages, it becomes evident that self-awareness and introspection are pivotal in nurturing a balanced and resilient life. We've journeyed through these seven anti-Stoic habits today, and it's my hope that you found profound insights to guide and refine your own path. Remember, Stoicism isn't about perfection, it's about progress and perspective. Take a moment to ask yourself, are you a victim of some of these habits? How can you course correct and improve? I encourage you to share your reflections and experiences in the comments below. Which of these habits resonated with you the most, and have you encountered other habits that challenge your stoic journey? Let's create a space for vibrant discussion and mutual growth. Thank you for joining me on this enlightening journey, and until our next exploration, may you find serenity and strength in the stoic way.